Hello and welcome to the Explosion Network's Doctor Who after show, Fish Fingers and Custard. My name is Dylan Blight. Joining me on this very last and special episode of this season, Ashley Hobley. Hey Dylan, excited to be here to talk about the best episode of 2019. Of Doctor Who, that's for sure. Yep. I, I, I feel like that's a brave thing. Bra- bold bold statement. Very bold statement that you're putting out there. I don't, I don't know yeah. if it'll pay off. We'll have to see what the rest of the year's episode's like when season 12 starts, of course, to, to, fully, <laughs> to, fully, yep. to fully find out. <laughs> um, so we're here to talk about the New Year's day special i had to really think about it for a second because it's still weird to say not just odd my mind goes to christmas special of course so um the new year's day special called resolution fitting in the theme i suppose uh directed by wayne yip and written by of course chris chibnall uh synopsis of which is as the new year begins a terrifying evil is staring from across the centuries of earth's history as the doctor ryan graham and yaz return home will they be able to overcome the threat to planet Earth. Um, so what are your overall thoughts on this New Year's Day special, Ash? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, we got a Dalek. Um, Spoiler. Sort of, in a, uh, sort of in a different role than we'd seen before. The kind of... I don't think we'd seen a Dalek do that kind of thing before. Not so. that I'm aware of. A recon Dalek or whatever they describe it as, no. No, yeah, so it's a bit of an interesting take, I guess. Um, but then we got the the Ryan's dad stuff, which was probably the best best stuff of the episode. So, yeah, Did you feel like solid, that was weird to chuck in to the special, considering how big of a part it was of the actual series? No, uh, it was either that or we wait till 2020. That's true. We see him. Yeah, I yeah. guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is true. Um, another thing I want to ask, why was everyone wearing scarves at the start of this episode? The Doctor had one cold. on? Graham had one on? Is it cold it's, inside the TARDIS? It's cold. No, it's cold in New Year's Day in the Northern Hemisphere. They were in space. They had the scarves on. I was like, why are we all wearing these scarves? Okay. It's just because they were honoring the <laughs> previous Doctor that sure, they'd I'll never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll allow it. Um, yeah. I thought, it, I thought it was really good. I thought the, uh, the, the Dalek story was really interesting. It was a well films uh episode you know it looked, it looked good um the stuff with the dad was was i thought the stuff with the dad was good but not as good as it could have been if it was tackled throughout a couple episodes spread out a bit longer in like the series you know yeah like it was very fast from yeah. it goes from fuck you dad i'm never like you're an asshole to the end of the episode where it's i love you all of a sudden like Gra- graham mm-hmm. had an entire season to get to i love you you know, but his dad yeah. only takes one New Year's Day special. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's the power of the New Year. <laughs> Apparently so, yeah. So that's That was my only real big problem, was it? Just yeah, was a, a little bit that's too... Fair. That's a fair well, criticism. Too rushed, yeah. Um, and the, the only other problem I had, and this isn't no- nothing to do with the episode in particular, it was the fact that I do feel like if the... The episode had leaked or whatever happened and they hadn't had to spoil if i hadn't had it spoiled and by spoiled i mean they put out the trailer because the episode leaked ahead of time uh and yep. confirmed that it was actually going to be dalek even though of course was already theorizing about it being a dalek and all these sorts of things i feel like the start of the episode would have been much more interesting when you wasn't exactly sure if it was a dalek or what kind of species it was because while, it, yeah. while it's creeping around, hanging on the wall, doing all these weird stuff, even when it's uh, taken over that girl, Lynn, later in the episode yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, it would have been like, oh, this is creepy. Like, what, what is it? Is it a Dalek? Because if they hadn't spoiled it, because I'd been theorizing, I still would have been like, is it a Dalek? I'm not sure. Like, it doesn't seem like a Dalek. That's But yeah, so it would have come a much bigger surprise when the doctor finally says, it's a Dalek. It's a Dalek. That would have been like a much bigger gravitas moment, I suppose. Yeah. <clears throat> so thanks leakers you just ruined our enjoyment of the yep. episode they always ru- they always ruin something that's for sure um yep. so for the fi- final time in 2019 <laughs> a couple days into the year for the final time yeah. uh let's go through uh the only episode that we are getting in 2019 the christmas special uh and see what's happened course so the episode starts new year out- special new year special sorry jesus christ it's, it's so hard <laughs> it is so hard 
Uh, the episode starts in medieval times. That's what I wrote down in my notes. Was did that seem right to you? Like I, I wasn't really. Cons- no, I like it, but then they were in America, right? On the, I Where guess. Oh, I guess yeah. I'm not sure. And then the other all- person somehow ended up in like Vanuatu or something. They do travel yeah. like somehow very fast across yeah, different yeah. places. I found the opening a bit confusing. I was like, I use enemies like uh, teaming up in in. Side note: Was the credit the opening credits in this at all? No, no. That was weird. That was also weird. Yes, that's I true. kept waiting. I'm like, yeah, they've. They're bringing back the cold open. <laughs> yeah, they're doing the cold open fine. You know, you took New Year's resolution. Cold opens are back. But no, you know, New Year's no. resolution. Fuck credits. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to know what show this is. I've seen the I've seen the tweets from the, the trolls who hate Doctor Who. And they say, the only good thing about this series is the opening credits. Chris Chibnall's like, you know what? The credits, gone. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, take away anything that they have. Uh, get rid of it. Uh, but yeah, starts in medieval times or something like that. Not really sure. Uh, three different people who are charged. Uh, they, they've killed this monster, which of course we later find out is a Dalek. Um, and they've cut up its body into three different parts of slimy goo, I guess, under it because they've wrapped it up and we, we don't really get to see it. Um, and they call the, the custodians and they're sworn to protect the, the buried body uh, parts for all time and their, their family and their relatives or whatever are going to continue the, the legacy of protecting these burial sites where they've buried these parts of Tardises, uh, Tardises, Daleks, sorry, parts of Daleks. Um, and we see two of them arrive and bury their part wherever it needs to go. But we find out that the third one was, uh, shot down by a, 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 an arrow by some, I don't know, random people or whatever, and was killed. Luggers. Yeah. And was killed right there and then, uh, and they took off with whatever gold he had or whatever. And his body just laid there and of course uh eventually him plus the uh dalek part that he had was yep. just barely covered over to be, he was like on the side of the road right it nobody seem- came across in the thousand hundreds of years and moved the body at all traffic back in those days ash uh very they different very different over the top yeah <laughs> i guess that's how we got buried so far that's yeah maybe. On. i don't know the ground <laughs> Some, crazy yeah Crazy times back then, <laughs> whatever time period this was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's where he's buried, and of course we we come back to the the current day's time and current day. We see these two people, uh, and they are ex- uh, they've got this excavation site happening, and we later find out it's underground a museum. I think it was what it was, or so- something like that. It was some sort of like building of sort, though. And it was like because the su- the yeah. sewer system was connected to it, very close. Uh, how they suddenly just found this thing down there, I don't really know. But um, either way, and they're discussing this New Year's kiss that they share. And it was like, was the New Year's kiss, was that a thing or was it not a thing? And of course, uh, she, the girl, she says it, it is a thing. A, it was a thing. Um, uh, her name's Lynn. The 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 guy's name is Mitch. Um, and Mitch is very happy to find out it was actually a, a thing. Good for, good for you, Mitch. Good for you. Good work, that. Mitch. Good work, Mitch. <laughs> You're doing good stuff over there. Good work, Presuming. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Good, good work and double checking. Communication. Communication is key to, to all relationships. Sir. That's for sure. But also, you're very naive this episode. Uh, they <laughs> they dig up, they dig up the, the 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 parts of the the body or whatever the act of excavating act excavating the site. They've got this uh, skull. They've got some other body parts and things. And of course, they also find the uh, wrapped up part of the Dalek. And they um bring them all over to the table and whatever they've got the the bone parts all laid out and these sorts of things and they for whatever reason i guess i mean i don't really know anything about i know as much as i've seen in jurassic park you know that's where i know everything about what these people do uh but they chuck the 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 daleks part the wrapped up part under a blue ultraviolet uh light or whatever which seems to uh, activate it bring it back to life give it some sort of shock i don't know i I don't understand it was chopped up into three bits. You'd think that would be enough. You would think it would be enough, but apparently... But apparently, uh, <laughs> Daleks are just immortal. No, well, they're only immortal if you put them under a blue ultraviolet light, which then yeah. brings that part back to light enough to cause the other parts to wake up in the parts that they're buried at, and then they can just suddenly teleport through space and time to reconnect with the other body part. Yeah, I'll be. I'll yep. be honest. All of this didn't make a whole lot, b- bunch of sense to me. Nope. It was very weird. But all in all, I was willing to kind of 
push it yeah. to the side and enjoy the episode for what it was, which, I mean, really, this is the kind of episode that I feel like people have been asking for, then people probably still complained at the same time because it was very much a just a fun romp. You know, it, it was just more pew-pew, yeah. bang-bang, sci-fi, nonsense, or not even, just fi. <laughs> <laughs> I, guess, I guess about the uh science part of it which what people have been wanting and i i did enjoy it it kind of fits the the theme of a more hey it's new year's day everyone's hung over watch this doctor who episode is there plot holes no uh, 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 so you know plot holes at all I've, I've, i drank too much last night it's fine um so then while we cut back to the doctor they're all up in space watching uh cosmic fireworks happen somewhere which are very pretty to uh hang out and have a, have a look see at that how does that work i don't know in space is not to be any oxygen so how they're supposed to ignite and cosmic fireworks ash obviously cosmic okay. Cos- cosmic is the key nice word to know that advanced technologies advanced civilizations in the future decide you know what we need to do we need to make fireworks work in space you better believe that's going to happen one day. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's definitely, <laughs> definitely going to be a, a thing. Someone's claimed a frame. Yeah. Yeah. Made I'm, fireworks work I in space. I made fireworks work in space. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're about to head off to go look at some more fireworks after they, they talk because it seems like they uh, have pretty much been traveling around yeah. looking at different sorts of fireworks. Shout out to places. the Sydney 2000. That's true. Yeah. 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 That's Which interesting. Was one of the places they went to is one of the best fireworks that shows. Being pitched. Oh yeah. It was no one of the ones they went to. Yeah. One of the ones they, they'd been to. And uh, Ryan said that was one of the best ones. So on your Ryan yeah. champion. Ryan honorary Australian. On, yeah. <laughs> honorary <laughs> Australian. <laughs> Uh, and they're about to head off to some other place when the doctor receives a just distress call and it's coming from all earth of course and uh primarily from sheffield because of course, everything happens in sheffield of course it's happening from uh, sheffield so they head on down there back to earth no more fireworks uh stuff fun stuff happening and down under, under the excavation site the bag which has the dalek in it of course is jumps off the table and seemingly disappears and uh lynn and mitch believe it is a brat or something along those lines taking off with it which is a bit silly they're a bit silly but i'll, I'll forgive them oh rat just grabbed the bag and took off that's that's very normal it's crazy it's, it's fine how that that works um and lynn goes off to, to find it of course and she finds this it was quite disgusting really the 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 dalek is alien-esque i guess yep. uh, alien gooey looking mess just kind of attached to this wall looking yeah very disgusting and we only see her touch it briefly um, before we cut back to see the TARDIS landing but what we of course find out later is that presumably she touched it and then all of a sudden it jumped onto her and attached itself to her and took over her cerebral cortex system and motor functions and whatever else uh and that's what what happens and that's why it disappears but we don't see that the the TARDIS arrives and of course everyone piles out Mitch is like how the fuck did that get here don't know whatever won't spend too much questioning. There's a killer rat around here. Help me find the killer rat. It's taking off with, with all my stuff. Um, and then the uh, Lynn appears and was like, oh, there's a, there was a creepy slime thing. How weird is that? And they go look at, for where this creepy slime thing was. And oh, it's disappeared off the wall. That's crazy. At this point, the doctor's a little bit wearisome, I suppose. Um, and the doctor wants to find out where the creepy little slime alien monster thing has gone because she had such a big alarm go off for whatever uh, ha- is happening on earth at the moment. And creepy yep. little slime thing doesn't sound like quite a big enough threat detector for her, her thing to be going off. Uh, so she tells Lynn and Mitch to head, head home, get some sleep and she'll get onto the case and she'll call them when works out what else is going on. Uh, Mitch has a really awkward moment when they go to leave because after everything that's happening, he's like, I want to get a drink. There might be a killer alien on loose or something, but I want to go get that drink now. And she's like, no, not right now. Just, right, uh, read the room, mate. Yeah. <laughs> read the room. That's, yeah, exactly. Uh, and then the doctor is like, t- decides that she'll go back to Graham's house, which of course Graham freaks, about, freaks out rightfully so because he's like, where the fuck is the tent? TARDIS going to land inside my house? And the TARDIS lands right um, on top of his table or coffee table or chair chair or something (laughs) the doctor's just breaking shit disrespectful 
is what is what she is really. Um, as soon as they timing wise, perfect because as soon as they arrive inside Graham's, the doorbell rings. Graham goes over to answer the door. Uh, we don't see who's there yet, but quickly closes it and comes back into the room. Ryan then goes to check who's at the door, and da da da. It's Ryan's dad, who we've had a lot of the, the season spent talking about him, what he's done, what he hasn't done primarily, where he hasn't been primarily, and all these sorts mm, of things. I actually don't think we've talked much about him. I think we've well, probably it's, projected it's the, that onto the story. It's more the concept of the, his absence, I suppose. His absence, Less about his him. Absence yeah. has been felt. His, his absence has been talked about. His absence has been definitely felt in conversations and, and, and these sorts of things. Like he, he yeah. shows up. We know about him. We know he, he's not, he hasn't been around for, for Brian. We know that these things, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah. but I didn't know his name was Aaron, but his name's Aaron. Hello, Aaron. Welcome to the show. Uh, what's up? What's up? <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Ryan's dad. But I like how the doctor does do this very much <laughs> like mum move here, I, I guess. Kind of. I was like, Hey, yeah. We're here. Ryan's dad. Ryan's dad. Oh yeah. Cool. Yeah, where were you at Grace's funeral? That was your yep. mum, you fucker. Get out of here, you piece of shit. Yeah, she t- she tells him what's for that. Good yeah. on him. Good on you, Doc. T- teach him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we then cut to uh, Lynn, who is arriving at her ha- at her home, uh, running upstairs to her bathroom. And she takes off her jacket, and we discover that yeah, the Dalek is creepily hanging on to the the back of her attached into her neck uh semi controlling her she's kind of at this stage able to yeah. talk to it and I try attempt to argue with it although uh yeah. can't really because it just tells her to shut up and we finally get to hear the dalek talk um it doesn't at this stage of course sound like a dalek because it doesn't have the computer thing over computer the computer voice modulate yeah yeah so a little bit different and also I'm like is it talking really it's more like a Tele, like it's a telecommunicate, you know what I mean? Like it's a mental thing, isn't it? It's not, it's not like it has a mouth unless it's talking out of her mouth. That's different. But when it's talking to her, it's in her head, surely? I, I don't really know. I don't, I don't know. The, the, it's very, it's a little bit weird. Either way, I don't like it. It's very slimy. It's got lots of slimy yeah. bits and I wasn't at all a, uh, a fan. The idea of having that on me, no thank you. No thank no. you at all. Um, Tries to argue with it. Doesn't have it. Uh, Dalek's like, I've got control of you. Sucked in. We then cut back <laughs> to the, the TARDIS. Doctor has finished scanning the material that uh, she was uh, try- going back there to scan. The part of the, the goo that was left behind of the uh, Dalek. And of course, this is the moment we kind of see in the trailer where she was like, one of the, mo- the most dangerous being in the whole galaxy. It's a Dalek. Dun, dun, dun. And yeah, I, and I definitely feel like this moment would have been a lot cooler if it hadn't have already been uh, spoiled and given away, and more of a a build up would have been a, yeah. would have made the episode's uh, first viewing a lot more impactful. I definitely feel. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, back at Lynn, though, the dark uh, it, the Dalek is getting her to search the internet to find out everything about the planet that it is now on. Uh, wants to know everything about Earth, where it is. And I'm like, you died here. Shouldn't you know what planet you fucking <laughs> died horribly on? Yeah, how many times have the Daleks come to Earth? At this stage? It's like, they must Lots. have been set here. Like, obviously medieval. I feel like they've been, uh, through history, the Daleks have been here. They have. I they don't know. In the present. Yeah. I, 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 like, I can think of episodes, obviously, where it's like the 50s or like even like 1800s i feel like there was one i feel like there was but that's what I'm, that's what i'm saying it's very confusing because i'm not exactly sure when, when that the prequel part of this episode is taking place like how early that is and because then you can kind of be like well this dialect was sent down then so it wouldn't know of course all the other dialects who tried to invade earth since then so i guess i choose to believe it because they that, they specifically never give you a time period for that opening segment either you know what i mean they, they never say 1760s you know something like that just so they can never accidentally fuck up the 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 placement of it i guess and where this dark is from um mm. but uh yeah so I'm searching the internet trying to find out what the planet's on and then uh gets lynn to hop into the car and uh, they're speeding down the highway zigzagging being a, a right mess on new year's day 
uh, too drunk to be on the road, that's for sure. And that's why a police officer tries to pull pull old Lynn over. And, and she does stop. And the Dalek takes out the police officer, of course. Although the police officer was being very weird about it. I, I feel like, you know, she's like, I'm a Dalek. You, you're an enemy of the Dalek. How do you spell that, love? Like, How do like, they not know who the Daleks are at this point? You'd think, surely, but... I don't Didn't know. like a gazillion come out of that box thing in like the end of the, the tenants, the tenants? first yeah. season? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. They, they're men in blacking it. I mean, yeah. I guess it's a lot of <laughs> people. To men in, it's like the freaking Cybermen at the end of the first season with uh, um, Capaldi. Oh, Capaldi? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Surely yeah. by this point you know who <laughs> these people are. Naive, naive. Too much time spending, yeah. uh, too much t- time spent just watching Netflix and stuff, which uh, is a joke that they, of course, have later in the episode. Uh, but the, the, the yeah. Dalek does take out the uh, the the male cop, and then we see a, a female one just do nothing but scream. Apparently, which uh, that was another weird moment. Yeah, like, that's fucking, the normal shoot it, police shoot reaction. It. Shoot it! If this was an American, shoot it! Like dead. You know, <laughs> dead. <laughs> That would have been like the car would have exploded with Dead. the amount of bullets that put it into it. Yeah, exactly. This this fucking Doctor Who though, damn Brit- it's Sheffield cops or whatever we got going come down here. Oh my my put my uh, my mates just got chucked out of the window yeah. somehow, and uh, that that's perfectly fine. I'll just get out of the car. I will get out of the car to scream. I could have screamed in the car yeah. and then proceeded to get out and shoot it, whatever order you want to do it in. But I will get out of the car. Just to scream, and then she would have had to walk all the way up. To, I'm like, fuck. Do they, have, do they have guns? T- taser it. Any like anything's <laughs> better than just screaming. Surely, Jesus. Okay. Oh. Like I understand it had tentacles coming off it. It was very weird. Yeah. Taser it. Pepper spray that motherfucker. Shoot it if you got a gun. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just scream at it, please, dear Lord. Uh, but that's what happens. And of course, uh, Lynn then steals the, the the police officer's clothes and car and takes off. <laughs> what down. was she doing then? <laughs> oh. Are we to assume that she got killed as well? That's what that was. I guess. <laughs> I guess. It's so weird. A lot of people die this episode, I feel. That's another I thing. Know, yeah. A lot of people die in this episode. Unless they're going to be like, nah. Dalek wasn't strong enough. <laughs> it shot them. Yeah. It fucking shot them. A lot of people die this episode. Uh, yeah, so it takes off once again uh, in police car. And uh, then we cut to Aaron and Ryan, who are sitting in a uh, co- coffee shop down the road from Graham's house, is what we got told. And Aaron's trying to sell the person behind the counter a microwave slash oven that's uh, in one thing that's the size yeah, of a that, microwave or something. That's a bad salesmanship job. I mean, he was pitching mad at a it. microwave. Somebody in a restaurant, like in the middle of the yeah eating hours. It's I don't know that's weird. It was very weird. At first, when he started talking, I'm like, "Oh, is that what his dad is? Like a um, slimy, like secondhand, you know, reseller? Is you know that kind of sleazy character?" But then he tries to he explains it as what like it's a legit job he's got or something where he's just trying to work for this place to sell these fucking microwave oven things or he's like these are legit it's a legit thing but i do like how this entire time because he's trying whenever he's trying to sell it to this this dude behind the counter you just see ryan in the background the entire time just like mm-hmm. yep fuck this yep. shit like <laughs> <laughs> listen to my dad he's like do you want to come out for coffee son i haven't spoke to you in about 10 years all right dad yeah no problem uh just sit there for a second son i'll try and sell this nice guy behind the counter at 7 a.m on a saturday afternoon a microwave slash oven combo that i'm sure he will likely buy <laughs> that's uh, exactly what's going to happen here but um so eventually ryan uh, uh aaron joins ryan and, and sits down and uh ryan ends up telling his dad's what what uh trying to tells his dad off for basically trying to talk to him like he's uh just, you know he's just re-entered his life and you know everything's fine and because he, he, his dad at this point hasn't made any attempt to apologize or anything like that it's, it's just like no. hey i'm here i'm selling microwave ovens what of it are we good and ryan's like no 
we are not very good at all. And uh, he's, yeah, his dad, uh, <laughs> his dad talks about when he, 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 he realized he fucked up. And by that point, this is, he's, he's saying by the time he realized he'd fucked up, he'd always, he'd already run away from Ryan and um, there was no point coming back to try and fix it. And it was a lot of blah, 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 excuses, excuses, excuses happening. And Ryan very much wasn't having it. And he responds to him and says, no, you hid when I needed you first mum." And then, then, and that was like the fucking nail in the coffin of that one. Get in there, yep. Aaron. Get in that coffin. You're off, mate. See you later. You're fucked. Yep. <laughs> Bury this father son relationship. Bury it <laughs> over there. <laughs> it's done. Ryan soldier. Uh, yeah. So that's uh, that's how well their coffee date was going as a, a lovely family. <laughs> it's going very very well. Um, Tardis though has taken off and it's uh, picked up Mitch who Yaz has called. Also, I point out Yaz does fuck all once again in this episode to the point you nearly forget she's in it again, which is something we kind of talked about in the season finale, of, of course, or like, uh, yeah, the season finale. And I, I definitely feel very much the same about Yaz in this episode. And I do, like, I hope she gets a bigger piece of the pie come 2020 when we get that 12th season because, oh, it's not until I see a name come up in my notes. I'm like, oh, Gaz is in the episode, isn't she? And it, it, I suppose it makes sense because a lot of it is to do with the primary, secondary story. The primary, secondary, what a sentence. The primary, secondary story of this episode is about Ryan and his dad, which of course then involves Graham as well. Uh, and then the villain is the Dalek, which is mostly about uh, the doctor. So Yaz is just once again like... Just get over there, Periphery. guys. Yeah, just uh, stand in the background. You do some I mean, cool she things. could have been working and then she could have stopped the Dalek. <laughs> yeah, she could have called up her police. No, her, well, I mean, from what we know with her police relationship, those people don't take it very serious. So I suppose they she probably yeah. couldn't help that much. Uh, so they pick I mean, up- it, do you reckon she even, even have a job at this point? I suppose the time travel thing, like we're just assuming okay. that they're, they're coming back in time is what I'm assuming. They, they never really covered it, I guess, because we've seen right. her come back. We saw that one episode she came back, talked to her her family and whatever, and they weren't like, oh, you've been missing for weeks. They were like, oh, hey. You know, so yeah. I, I'm just assuming she's still coming back in time Same to regular, yeah. do Not her job. Any questions, yeah. yeah. I guess. Okay. <laughs> it's, you kind of have to assume these things at some points. Uh, yeah. But yeah, she's rang Mitch got in contact with him. Uh, the TARDIS uh, has then picked him up. And of course he comes inside, does the whole, it's much bigger on, on, in, on the inside, blah, 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 blah. And then Mitch begins explaining the story of the custodians that we heard at the uh, start of the, uh, the episode, of course. And then the doctor finally realizes that Lynn may be being controlled by the Dalek and they head off trying to track her down because Mitch points out that she always uh, is one of those people who has her phone on a response super fast, blah, blah, blah. And they haven't been able to get in contact with her. So they're like, dun, dun, dun. she may be in trouble. Better go find her. Um, Aaron and Ryan arrive at Graham's at this point And Ryan walks in to just in time to before they, as they're kind of getting ready to take off here and um, starts, putting down all the stuff he's got and whatever else. And the, the doctor explains what it is. And that's a, a Dalek. And it is in fact a recon Dalek, which was sent. A, well, I mean, it's a recon. It makes sense from the name. It's sent ahead before the, the army of Daleks would have come in, of course. And the recon Daleks mission is going to be to find some way to contact its army of, well, the Daleks, of course, to come take down the, take down earth. Um, and it was the first of its kind. The recon Daleks were the first of its kind to ever leave Scarus. There you go. That was, I believe the law dump yep. we got there. <laughs> um, Lynn then arrives at, I, I'm not, I wasn't sure, quite sure what this building was. I, 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 I feel like I missed it. it was confused. Um, but some sort of place that was holding alien weaponry or, or something along those lines is, is what I, I kind of got from it. It was very, fast i feel it was like hey it's a place yeah. it's got buildings it's got security guards alien weapons uh it knows that there's weapons here at once that's why we're here i'm like whatever good enough for me i'm not rewinding to find out what sure. it is so i don't think it's that important uh begins knocking out people or killing them however we want to look at it of course gets in there but then the doctor hacks into it or something along those lines i guess with a 
microphone inside the TARDIS and begins talking to it. And the da- the Dalek, at which at this point has uh, begun loaded up uh, the car, it's got full of weapons, attempts to get rid of the Doctor uh, out of its head, I guess. Like, stop talking to me or whatever else. The Lynn's trying to fight it off at this point, we can tell, and these sorts of things. Um, but the Doctor gets enough on it to begin tracking it or attempt to find it. But uh, the Dalek, pretty smart Dalek, as it's driving around in the police car, it is shooting out all of the... Uh, well, they like uh, traffic cam- traffic cameras, so they can't like track the car's exact position because they're tracking. How yeah, freaking smart point. is this Dalek to figure out that there's traffic cameras all around the city of London? How much? How impressive was that Google search? I was about to say that Google search gave it a lot of information, including, <laughs> every including mo- the location of top secret alien weapons. Yeah, yeah, which is you can find on Google very easily, Ash. Okay, very yep. easy. I'll have you know, very very easy. <laughs> um, this next part I thought was interesting and semi important to well important to Doctor Law, Doctor Who Law, and where we're at. But the Doctor tries uh, ring Kate from Unit, which of course was she was a huge part of uh, Capaldi's, Capaldi's era, and uh, she gets a horrible secretary type woman on the on the phone. I guess yep. like answers the phone. Oh, hello, where can I put your phone call through? To you know, like that, that kind of horrible person. And uh, she explains that unit was shut down because uh, a bunch of different places pulled funding from it or something along those lines, which I felt like was a very uh, semi uh, political comment on. It was a commentary on Brexit. Yeah. Yeah. All the international, all the other European places that were funding unit pulled out when they announced they're going to leave the European Union. So So Brexit uh, fucked up unit. Which made aliens invade, you know, it's, it's very, uh, <laughs> I hope we get an episode with Kate in the next season. Just yeah, to hope, see what she's. Well, it's even more interesting now if they're going to play this whole line of, uh, Brexit fucked unit, then, um, it's like, what's, and what's then she doing? What if we have the, the alien squid thingies, the, the like can shape shift. Oh, um, yeah, I can't remember. I'm sorry. But yeah, if they don't have the box anymore that's being held by Unit anymore, why why are they? That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. There's many questions. There's so there. many questions. They've opened up a big can of worms of this whole unit yeah. shutdown thing. I completely forgot about that. Actually, yeah, fiftieth, uh, the fiftieth special. Yeah. Dun dun dun. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but anyway, unit shut down, so they're fucked. Doctor's like, we're on our own. Everyone's like. Cool, thanks, Doc. Uh, Graham then at this point is trying to talk to Aaron in his home because they kind of got left behind here for all of this uh, about uh, Grace and he shows Aaron this uh, box that is left in the house and it contains all of Aaron's kids, uh, his toys from when he was a kid and stuff like that. And he was going on about how Grace, you know, never forgot him and loved him and these sorts of emotional hits, I guess. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> um so the dalek uh the dalek the dalek yes arrived at some sort of metal workshop i guess at, the, at this point as well to get it like a wasn't sure if it was a junkyard that had a place where you could meld stuff as well or it was actually a, a melding i don't i'm not really sure anyway some dude of course comes out to try and stop lynn from entering the place and he's of course because she's wearing a cop uniform is saying everything here is illegal blah 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 the dalek shoots him Obviously not dead. Obviously he's fine. They they wouldn't kill that many people in this episode of Doctor Who. It's New Year's. It's New Year's Day special. You can't kill this many people on New Year's Day. Yes, you can. Um, they uh, Dalek then heads inside and gets to work on recreating its casting and uh, its weapons and those sorts of things, which it happens to have all the right means and ways of which to make that happen. <laughs> Uh, Lynn then tries fighting the Dalek again uh, as the Doctor arrives outside and finds the body of the person who ho- owned the middle place dead on the ground. Um, and then the Doctor and everyone begins entering the building, slowly walking around, and they hear Lynn yelling for help at this point. Uh, they find her on the ground, uh, semi-injured, I guess. And the Dalek has, though, disattached itself from her no longer controlling her. And the doctor, at first, I feel like it's like, oh, good job. You uh, you fought it off. You you got it off here. But then yep. it's like, nope. The, the It actually left on purpose. 
dun dun dun. Why would it leave on purpose? And the doctor heads off to find it, heads into a different room, back room or something like that. And the next second, doors explode as the Dalek, now in full casing, enters the room, of course, after the exterminate, and the doctor blocks all of its weapons in good fashion, though. Just, I think there's a reason giving. It's like it's blocks it, says its weapons are still rebooting or not up to par. I don't know. It's firmware isn't updated for to be able to block TARDIS virusware. I, I don't know, but <laughs> either way, the, the doctor manages to block its, its weapons for this period of time here. Can't block them later though. So it's definitely just a temporary, temporary block thing that's happening. Uh, the doctor then begins talking to it and of course pisses it off by saying how terrible Daleks are and how much they, they suck and these sorts of things. And the, the Dalek, takes off into the sky and the doctor returns to TARDIS and they head off in chase of it. And on the way they stop to pick up Graham and Aaron. Get in. Let's go. Yeah. Go, yeah, go yeah. to kill it. Cause they need Graham. Well, they do need Graham. Cause if, without Graham, what could they do? Really? That's true. Did they yeah. need Aaron? No, not really. Well, they do later. We find out that's good. That's they def- definitely, definitely, def- yeah. definitely need Aaron at this point. Um, the, the, the dialect though lands in some sort of airfield, I guess is where I took it as it looked yep. like some sort of airfield and the army are there already somehow. They just knew that's where the, the dialect would land, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, and then the army men begin surrounding it, surrounding it, blocking it off, I guess. And they begin shooting at it. All the bullets bounce off it, which didn't really make sense to me because I'm like, it's a metal casing, you know, like it's okay, not, it's not like aliens metals or anything yeah. Why would... like i can understand if it was one bullet it bounce off but it's like if you hit it enough times then it'll like break surely or bend in or, you know something yeah. e- either way it's not do some sort of damage some sort of damage with the amount of bullets that they fire at it, at it here for sure so that was that was a bit weird but then of course the dialect bounces the bullets all off everyone uh, uh, and the, it begins firing back kills someone one army dude says, yeah, we all got to run, get the fuck back. <laughs> then the best part of the episode happens, which is that a tank shows up. And this part was amazing. A tank shows up and they have an awesome shot of the, the Dalek facing off against the tank. And the, the tank fires a, uh, a shot at the Dalek and the Dalek then shoots out a, a counter shot, which hits the, the tank's bullet midair and makes it fire off in the distance. But then the Dalek shot still manages to hit it and of course causes the tanks to ex- the tank to explode. And th- this was my personal favorite moment of the episode because this, this is the moment where I'm like, this is, this is the episode everyone's been wanting for sure. Cause this is nonsense, but it's cool to watch, <laughs> you know, like it's absolute nonsense. Yeah, but it's explosions and stuff. This is this is what we wanted, isn't it? Is this what the people wanted, Ash? For sure. I guess. <laughs> I feel like that's what they've been wanting. Um. So then, uh, after taking out everyone, the TARDIS, uh, uh, the TARDIS up in the sky, they're still trying to work out what to do to to be able to stop. Dalek when they, they, they catch up to it and then Aaron has this miraculous idea using his fucking oven microwave or whatever it is they're going to pull it apart to get a certain part that's inside it uh, to be able to do damage to the, the, the Dalek later because the Dalek only melts to this special oven microwave product bullets do yep. zero damage to it at all microwaves microwaves though really fuck Daleks up, which makes sense because Daleks are basically made from kitchenware products. Um, so it makes perfect sense at, the, at this stage. Um, uh-huh. The Dalek then arrives at the GCHQ, the Government Communication Headquarters, which I was like, of course. Yes, I too have heard lots about this place and I'm sure it's just very easy to... <laughs> there's one dude that works there. He's like clicking all the buttons on the computers, making sure the Wi-Fi is working for all of Sheffield and Britain. Well, I can't yep. make the Wi-Fi work. It's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> the Dalek comes down, blows a bunch of the shit up, of course lands in there and begins uh, hacking into the, the the systems we have to call for help, but then also shutting down all of Earth's internet, uh, mobile lines, all that sort of stuff in, in, in the process. And then we cut to this very weird scene because it felt, it felt like too long of a forced joke. But at the same time, I was like, I don't know. 
I, it's kind of funny, but I don't know, it, it still felt weird to include, which is where this fam, this bunch of kids are on the can. Uh, the fucking internet's not working, mum. Not even like, what are we gonna yeah. do? And then the mum comes out. She's like, oh, the the mobile phones aren't even working. Uh, oh, fucking Netflix isn't working, mum. What are we gonna do? And then the big punchline is, I guess we'll have to have a conversation. Uh, yeah. How do you feel about that that joke, Bart? Do you think it worked or? I mean, it's it's an easy joke. I mean, the most basic joke you could have gone for, most lowbrow, general. Yeah, it was fine. It was fine. I, I mean, guess. you could see it was coming. You could see the setup. Just felt felt going for the easy. Yeah, fuck. easy joke. Damn Go kids the these board. days. Play a board game. Go outside. Some. <sighs> I'm like, the fucking half the people watching the show right now, watching it through BBC iView or ABC iView, don't make jokes about yeah. <laughs> like, stop watching Netflix, get outside, read a book, you fucks. <laughs> like, yeah. you're watching your TV show. Um, yeah, it felt like kicking the kicking the younger generation. I guess we'll have to watch. The, they should have just had them turn on the TV because the TV would have worked. It's like, oh no, we'll have to watch the BBC. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would have that been, I don't know, maybe that was even worse of a joke, I guess. No, um, that would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> the Doctor then arrives and begins threatening the Dalek, saying, I'll give you one more chance to uh, leave Earth and fuck off. But I'm like, why would you let it leave? That's putting other That's dumb. places. Why would that, you do that? Putting other planets at risk. You, come on, Doctor. You're not really going to give it a chance, are you? Um, but she's the Doctor who doesn't kill, so that kind of makes I guess, but I'm, I feel like she's she, done it. Just, just then she it. does at the end. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Um, it's like she turns around and asks everyone, you know, I've gave <clears> one to my last chance, have I? Yep, cool. You got it on one last chance. And then every, she begins running down one side of the room and everyone kind of s- sneaks off to the side. The Daleks shooting it like fucking come here, doctor, exterminate, exterminate. And she does a wicked ass slide along the ground. Was like, yeah, look at me. <laughs> bloody action hero made over here and yep. then the <laughs> this is another thing i do like this part of the episode because it's something i've always thought about with the daleks i'm like if you just dodge a couple bullets <laughs> you're like <laughs> once you get close to it what's it do and the answer is yeah. it can't do nothing because it has <laughs> one fucking gun on, on it's the a ranged it. weapon it's a ranged <laughs> weapon right in front of you as soon as you get behind yeah. it or beside it it's like it can't hit you with it can't do nothing like what it can it can try and run away from you at that point i guess but it can't really do anything um which is what happens here doctor runs up beside it uh grabs its gun begins kind of turning it (laughs) because they're easy to turn i guess and then uh manages to get it to shoot out the communication thing it was sending out for the daleks and then everyone else comes up beside it as well and starts putting on these parts from the microwave oven thing which automatically somehow because means begin melting the uh the, the Daleks casing and it suddenly explodes and they presume the the Daleks dead yay what an end to the episode I actually thought I was like oh yeah that's the end I guess like I, I, I for a split second yeah. I was like this is actually the the way they're going to end the, the episode and I would have preferred it I would have preferred it because I don't like the way this next scene plays out simply because it is the part that includes the the very rushed Love you, Dad. Moment. And I was like, hmm, don't don't mm. like how we got to that. But the Dalek has escaped its casing once again. It's now gra- grabbed onto Aaron, and it's asking the Doctor to take it to the Daleks' fleet. And uh, Yaz gets her second line of the whole episode here, where she says, "No, don't let it happen." And then back to Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> back sorry, to Ryan. Yaz. Yeah, sorry, Yaz. We we like you, but just saying. Um, Brian says, no, you know, can't, can't, can't let it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yell out more, guys, dude. Just bring a little more to the conversation. Uh, and the, the, the doctor agrees and says, yeah, all right, Dalek, I'll, uh, I'll take you to the fleet. So they, they head out into space and the doctor opens the, the, the front doors while they're out there. And what they see is a, a, a soup, a sun going supernova and it begins sucking the, the Dalek out kind of, but of course the Dalek is hanging, hanging on very strongly to the back of Aaron's back and its neck and whatever the fuck else has got its hands on, I guess down there, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, nudge. And the, the Dalek won't give up 
dragging Aaron. The force is getting stronger. Everyone else is having to grab on at this point, and Aaron's now at the point where he's kind of hanging on just from the inside of the door to the TARDIS, barely hanging on. But of course, Aaron runs down. Um, Aaron, Ryan runs down there, says the magic words to his dad, "Dad, I love you." And then uh, they manage to get the the Dalek off its back, and it falls into the sun and. And dies horribly, I guess. And they close the door, and everyone hugs, and everyone's happy, and hoorah, hoorah, hoorah. And yeah, I, I would have much preferred the episode just to end the way it did before, with them just kind of hinting at, hey, we'll do more with Aaron later, because this felt like, hey, he's the, he's now suddenly near death, and Ryan's just rushed to say, rushed to uh, see the end of his thing with his dad through to this this moment where it's like, oh, we're best pals now. I'm like, nah. Don't like it. Don't like it. I think it's a bit unrealistic. I think the father would have been pulled out by the supernova as well. I think the Dalek would have had more chance of holding on to him than him holding on to staying in the ship. Probably true. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it would have been like just kill them both. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a kill them both. A then, somber moment, but you know. Then, then you have next Ryan season. Would have moved on. Yeah, the next season you have Ryan dealing with his dad. His dad. And his feelings with his dad, with Graham and whatever else. Um, but he, can, he, you know, they do it that way. <laughs> I guess it's, they do it that way. It's a lot darker. It's a lot darker take on <laughs> where the show definitely went with it. But you know, that's why I'm not writing it. And Chris, Chris Chibnall's yeah. over here doing these New Year's Day specials. It's a family show. Yeah. Is it though? Come on. Really? If that's if that's really what we want to call it, a family show. Mm. Um. So then Aaron saved, they're all hugging, everything's great. Of course, they go back down, down to Earth. They're like, hey, I know you just, Aaron, I know like Ryan's just forgave you and we're still not, <laughs> we're still not 100% sure what you, you do for a job. Was that actually your job, the microwave thing, or was that some kind of bullshit? We're not actually sure, but uh, do you, do you just encountered the most dangerous alien species alive, was alive. Uh, do you want to come on trips through space? And Aaron rightfully says, no, no, I don't want, don't, want to, <laughs> don't, don't want to do that at all. That sounds horrible. Don't, don't get me near that. Uh, but everyone, of course, piles back into the TARDIS. Uh, you got Lynn and, um, what the fuck was his name? Mitch was what it was, wasn't yep. it? Thank you. Sure. It's Mitch for the last time I mentioned on, the, on, the, <laughs> on this episode. That's for sure. Uh, Mitch, yep. they have a, the shot where, of course, they're holding hands and they watch the TARDIS take off as the doctor gets back into it and says, we're going to go everywhere, which which I didn't really like as the, the f final line for this episode know. either. So only, only because it was too similar to the season finale line which I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was another thing where the doctor gets in and was like, there's a wide range of space and place, you know, like yeah. she, very similar ending. I felt, and they'd already used the note in the season finale. And then they used the, a very similar note and line from the doctor to close the, the just the special. to reiterate. Yeah. I'm like, can't you wait a year before you do, <laughs> before you do the exact same fucking line again. And then I, I yeah. watched through all the credits. Cause I was like, maybe there'll be something at the end, a little bit of a tease or something like that. Cause one of my other problems I had with this episode, and it's nothing really to the episode itself and more of a, something I not built up within myself, but kind of had hopes that I would do, which is tease a tease a villain or a story element for the the coming season or something along those lines which of course doesn't do and then i was wondering oh maybe there'll be like a five second tease at the end of the the credits or something maybe a five second tease about that timeless child thing i don't know anything like that just to to kind of hint where we, we, we could be going in the future but we get nothing. The credits just end with the, the words coming up the doctor will return not the doctor will return in 2020 or or just the doctor will be back at, at some point yeah. and uh so a very long year's wait begins ahead of us uh so before we get into our closing thoughts though on, on all of that that is um what are you gonna rate the villain for the new year's day special ash the recon um, dalek let's give it an eight yeah yeah pretty solid pretty menacing was a real thorn in their side, but then went out like a, you know, could have held on more. Went out like a biscuit. Agree. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, I'll give it an eight too. I mean, it's a Dalek. It was better than yeah. some Daleks. That's for sure. I felt, I felt like 
smart enough and not, you know, it yeah. was scary at the start. And I, I definitely feel like if you didn't know it was going to be a Dalek, it would have been that start to see where it goes from start to the finish would have been a lot scarier. So yeah, let's lock in an eight. Best, best villain of the, the <laughs> of the season, a Dalek. Yeah. It's probably true. Um, yeah. So you got any uh, closing thoughts on this week's episode or closing thoughts on the, the season as a whole or anything coming no. up since we have like a fucking year to you wait before we get anything. I'm else? just really happy that my uh, guess that or well, the rumor that I heard didn't come true. Oh, that Graham was going to die. Yeah. I'm glad my rumor that I was talking about did come true. And I just hope that I, I would have much rather to have found out watching the episode instead yeah, of yeah. Uh, ahead of time. That would have been, nicer um but yeah i mean that's it we got we got a year to wait after that i i i feel like as a special it was good you know like we definitely have a lot worse christmas specials for sure um my my, my only other thing is that the, the new year's day theme of this episode was like five percent you know it's barely anything to do with the episode yeah. and it basically was just a longer episode oh, yeah. of doctor Who. it's you know a 50 whatever minute to an hour a little bit longer episode that was just a it's a, a simple a special thing um because as bad as some of the christmas specials are sometimes i do appreciate that they at least try to make them you know it's t- tied into the theme they yeah. are christmasy for the for majority of the the time and so it works so my, my feelings on the the new year's day special Take it or leave it, you know. Go back to Christmas next year. I'm not going to. Apparently, it was the lowest rating of all the Christmas or New Year's specials. Oh, really? For the last since the, they came back. So, so I think it's going to be going back to Christmas next time. That's for well, sure. Well, it makes more sense. Everybody had a big night, New Year's Eve. Everybody wants to go to bed early, New Year's Day. I guess. Well, I the other interesting thing is that that's the next thing we will probably find out. The next thing we'll probably find out before ahead of any kind of season 12 news or trailers or anything like that is we're probably going to find out if they're doing a Christmas special for this year. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing. Cause we, you know, we're, we're saying this is the final episode of 2019 that we know of that we know of. Yeah. They could be back for one more episode this year and it would be a if they cave and go back to christmas if they special. cave and go back to a christmas special which i feel like chimno was so against apparently that it wouldn't be but if it's like if the studio is like bbc's like look at these numbers you're doing a fucking christmas special <laughs> this year <laughs> and i would prefer the christmas special actually now i'm thinking about it i want the christmas special if not only for the fact that that means there's kind of something else this year like between whenever season 12 comes out, which probably isn't for 18 months plus, you know, at this stage, like it's going to be over a year. So it it would be a lot better to have a Christmas special later in this year to, to, as a bump in the row to at least be like, Oh yeah, Dr. Who's a show, by the way, that still exists. It's coming season 12. So yeah, I'm I'm down for the Christmas special this year. Give me that. Give me, please (laughs) give me the Christmas special. But uh, yeah, that's it. So that is a wrap on Fish Fingers and Custard for season eleven, maybe for twenty nineteen. Not really sure at this stage. Uh, <laughs> there may be another one this year later. We'll be back on Christmas, uh, Christmas uh, Boxing Day or the day after or something. We're like, hey, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're here. But other than that, that is definitely a wrap for Fish Fingers and Custard season one. Um, I'll talk about the 11th season of Doctor Who. Thank you for joining us for each and every episode and or and this episode of Fish Fingers and Custard. You can find us recording the show live on Twitch when we record it live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Explosion Network. And then you can find it on the YouTube services, youtube.com slash Explosion Network, of course. Uh, you can find the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other podcasting services, or you can find it through all those means whatever else explosionnetwork.com along with all our other great content including all the after shows which the next after show we have coming up would probably be game of thrones i guess south of king's landing is probably the next one that's coming up i believe viewing gods making a return most likely this year as well i'm not really sure what's happening with that show it's a thing that exists yeah. <laughs> it's very weird model hasn't been cancelled yet hasn't been cancelled so yeah being a lookout for all our other great content of course uh, you can follow explosion network on twitter 
at Explosion Pod. You can follow me on Twitter at Viva La Dill, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. You can follow Ash on Twitter at A-S-H-L-E-Y-H-O-B-L-E-Y. And Ash, for the final time of this season, sign us off. Um, Family's not just about DNA, Dylan. That's true. Goodbye, yeah. everyone. <laughs>